determined that you're going to live the way God wants you to live, I want to tell you what, he'll get on board with you. The Holy Ghost will get on board with you. Angels will be sent out to help you. You say, God, I got a perfect heart and I'm pressing toward that place of perfection. I'm not going to put up with lukewarmness. I'm not going to put up with mediocrity. I'm going to be fully committed. I'm going to grow. God, I want you to be proud of me. How many of you want God to be proud of you? That's one of my greatest desires. I want him to look at me and say, that's my girl. I'm proud of her. And I think you want that too. God desires boldness and courage. Let's look at Hebrews 4, 16. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. The throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners that we might receive mercy for our failures. And find grace to help in good time for every need. Appropriate help, well-timed help, coming just when we need it. So we have a high priest who understands our weaknesses and our infirmities. He's been tempted in every point like we have. Because of that, we can come boldly to the throne. And ask him to forgive us and to meet our needs. But what happens? People ask God to forgive them. They will even say they believe they're forgiven and they'll still feel guilty. Feel guilty. Well, you can't get rid of the sin and keep the guilt. Because if there is no sin, there is no guilt. So if your sins are forgiven, then there's no guilt. So you either have to make a decision that your sins are forgiven and there's no guilt or your sins are not forgiven and you have to be guilty. But if your sins are forgiven, how many of you believe when you ask God to forgive your sins sincerely that he does? All right. How many of you also suffer way more than you should from guilt? Okay, we have a problem because all the same hands are up. <laughs> you believe God forgives your sins when you ask him to, but you still feel guilty. You know what it is? It's your way of trying to pay for what you did wrong. And I can tell you that God don't need your help. If you could have paid for your sins, he wouldn't have sent his son to suffer the way he did and die the terrible death that he did. Our righteousness cannot make up for our sin. We cannot reconnect the power line once it's broken by sin. Only God can do that through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I actually believe that this is one of the biggest problems that we have in the church. God is not mad at you. God is not mad at you. God is not mad at you. <laughs> but you know what? I think the biggest majority of people kind of vaguely think that he is. Matter of fact, I can go a step further and say, God is pleased with you. Oh, now come on, Joyce. Yeah. Man, you don't know how I've acted this week. I didn't say he's pleased with everything you do. He may have to spank your little spiritual bottom. But he's pleased with you. My kids don't do everything I'd like them to do, but man, do I love them. And you know why? Because they love me. I talk to every one of my kids almost every day, some of them two and three times a day. Our kids love us. And it's amazing when you love your mom and dad, what they'll overlook. <laughs> but if they didn't love me and they just came by every day telling me their good works and trying to impress me, I would just, you know, think, don't come. Just love me. We're either forgiven and not guilty or we're not forgiven and guilty. But we cannot be forgiven and guilty. <laughs> Make your mind up tonight. I think a whole bunch of you need to hear this, and not only you, but many, many people watching by TV. If you believe your sins are forgiven, then the guilt that you feel is a lie from Satan. It's just a feeling and you need to stop letting your feelings rule your life. 
I had, I mean, I had to get the shouts on me to get over this. I mean, I would get to the point where when I would ask God to forgive me and I'd still feel guilty, I would say, I am not guilty. I have asked God to forgive me and I am not guilty. That feeling is a lie. Do you hear me, devil? I am not guilty and you are not going to condemn me. But if you're just going to sit around and just, oh, this is just so hard, my God, it's just so hard. God, I just don't know how much longer I can go on like this. Everything is so hard. No, you need to get a little backbone. And you need to stand up and say, the greater one lives in me. I'm not going to put up with this nonsense. God loves me. He sent his only son to die for me. He understands me. I am forgiven. A perfect heart, I don't believe, worries. It's not anxious. It's not angry. And it's not full of unforgiveness. It's peaceful. And I can tell you right here, people have so many problems with this thing right here. So many people worry. Try to figure everything out. Get all anxious about what's going to come up next. Worry, worry, anxiety, reasoning, reasoning, confusion, anger, anger, mad at people, mad at themselves, mad at God, mad at their circumstances. Half the world is mad. Probably 90% of the world is mad. And a lot of them are Christians. Some of you even came here tonight with somebody you're mad at. <laughs> Some of you sitting at home right now watching this program and you're mad at the person you're watching it with. full of unforgiveness. Well, you just don't know what they did to me. It's just too hard. If you could not forgive, God wouldn't tell you to do it. I'm glad for that little Mickey Mouse clamp. I can do it wrong. Good grief. I said, if you couldn't forgive, God wouldn't tell you to do it. And two people over here just went. <laughs> See, we'd much rather think we can't help it. Wouldn't we? Everybody here would just like to hang on to their problems and think, well, I just can't help it. I can't help it. It's just too hard. You don't know what they did to me. I was reading something this morning by Andrew Murray about the Lord's Prayer. And he said, the moment you say our Father, the next thing you should do is say, God, I'm not mad at anybody, and I have no unforgiveness in my heart. Because the rest of whatever you're going to pray is useless if you don't get that straightened out first. Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. If we won't forgive people, then we have no right to go to God and ask Him to forgive us. And we must ask Him to forgive us our sins or we can't even go to Him. And you don't just go to God with all your petitions. In the Lord's Prayer, the first three things is His name, His kingdom, His will. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Then give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have hurt us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. First it's him, then it's us. Our Father, I'm not mad at anybody. There's nobody I have any unforgiveness toward. If you can't settle that, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings, but the Bible says that when you pray, if you have ought against anyone, <laughs> leave your gift at the altar, go make things right with your brother, then go back and offer. This is an important thing. If God is willing to forgive us our sins, He expects us to forgive other people. There's not one person in here today that has had an offense against you that it is any greater than your offense toward God.
First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. But let it be the inward adorning and the beauty of the hidden person of the heart. The verse before it is talking about how we try to decorate our outer man. And that may be good, you know. I mean, I spend about an hour getting ready in the morning. If it's a day when I got to wash my hair, it takes me an hour. So I ought to spend at least more than that trying to get my insides ready, don't you think? Come on, ladies, if you spent one half the time getting your heart ready as you do your body, getting those perfect earrings on and that just right outfit. And 1 Peter 3, 4, let's look at what's really important to God. Let it be the inward adorning, the beauty of the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible and unfading charm of a gentle and a peaceful spirit, which is not anxious or wrought up, but is very precious in the sight of God. Upset, upset. I'm so aggravated. I'm so frustrated. I'm just upset. I'm angry. I'm mad. Well, get over it. Well, I can't. It's just too hard. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. This was just right before Jesus left us. Peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Now, get this. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Okay, now let me, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a, a little story. It's happened to my daughter this week. I went over to see my daughter. I had a little time in between appointments and I stopped to see my daughter and my twin granddaughters. And my daughter was on the phone and I could tell she wasn't just overly happy about what was going on on the phone. And uh, so she let me know she had to finish this call. She said, I've been on this call a long time. I have to finish it. And, and then when she was on hold, she kind of verbalized to me who she was talking to. It was some phone company and she said, you know, every time I call there, I just get a big run around and rig my roll and I never get any answers. I never get anything done. And I, you know, this just aggravates me and I'm so tired of this. And so then when she got off the phone, she said, well, that's it. Now what they told me to do didn't work. So all that time was wasted. And she said, there's nothing that I hate worse than people who waste my time. I am so frustrated with people who waste my time. So I said, carefully. <laughs> I said, you know, I know how you feel, but I know from experience that you're going to keep getting those people until they no longer bother you. And she said, now see, this was good because she had a right heart attitude. Now, she could have just come right back at me and said, well, you, you don't need you. Blah, 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 blah. And that's what we do so often when God's trying to deal with us about something or get a truth to us. Instead of just receiving it with all the pain that it brings. You're right. I'm wrong. Instead of doing that, we're like. Blah, 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 blah. And then we just go off and don't think any more about it, but we keep the problem. But there's one good thing about God, you never flunk out in his school. No matter how many times you have to take the test over, you will do it until you pass. How many of you have wondered, why does this same thing keep happening to me? I mean, I used to think years ago, I mean, God used store clerks on me. Slow clerks who didn't know what they were doing, didn't know how to run the register, didn't have prices, ran out of tape in the register, didn't know how to fix it, and I was in a hurry. And I would get so 
aggravated. And I would have on my Jesus rhinestone pen, but I'll tell you what, there was nothing about my attitude that looked like Jesus anywhere. <sighs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, now I'm going to tell you the honest to God's truth. I went from slow clerks to no clerks. I couldn't even find anybody to take my money when I would go out shopping sometimes. I would be like, does nobody work in this department? So I know all about this stuff. So my daughter says, you know what? She said, I set myself up for this. She said, before I picked that phone up and called them, I thought this is going to be a nightmare. I know what's going to happen. Now, this is one of these deals where this company provides their TV service, their internet service, their phone service. So it's like, you got to get this thing straightened out. Because you know how we are today about communication. If the whole world can't find us for five seconds, it's like, <laughs> wow. So she called me later that night. She said, I have got a funny story to tell you. She said, am I really set my heart right, prayed before I called them after you left, because I had to get the thing straightened out. She said, sure enough, I got another person who didn't know what they were doing. I'm wasting time, waiting, 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 but she said, I'm staying calm. I thought, no more devil, you ain't getting me this time. She said, I'm staying calm. I'm acting like a Christian. I'm behaving. And she said, before long, the woman said, I'm going to get my manager. The manager got on the phone. He solved the problem in just a few seconds. And he said, you know what? Since things weren't done right for you and this has been, you know, you've had to take your time to do this. He said, I just, I, I want to do some things for you. How would you like to have a double internet feed into your house for a year? How would you like to have HD TV free for a year? I mean, he ends up giving her like three or four things. And she's like, that was God. <laughs> and see, to me, this is just so, such a classic God story. Because we pass the test and then God comes in and does something amazing for us. When we have those tests, it's just God checking us out to see if we really believe what we say we believe. Oh, I trust God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I trust God as long as I don't have to wait two seconds or put up with anybody that's hard to get along with. As long as I get my way the minute that I want it, I trust God. But boy, hmm, I'm preaching much better than you're acting. You say, well, Joyce, it's just so hard not to worry. You know, when Paul said, I've learned how to be content, I've been thinking about that lately. I've learned how to be content. You know, he didn't get it from reading a book or hearing one sermon. Probably took years. I've learned how to be content. But you know what it took? It took me doing all of it the wrong way over and over and over and over and finally finding out that no matter how much I worried, it wasn't going to change anything. No matter how aggravated I was, it wasn't going to keep me from having problems. No matter how slow people frustrated me, they were going to still be there. And I finally just learned the hard way that only God can fix what needs to be fixed in my life and I might as well just go ahead and enjoy my life while He's working. Don't let the devil steal your joy. Perfect heart is not full of fear. You may feel fear, but you won't let it control you. We're all going to feel fear. Courage is going forward in the face of fear. But when you start letting fear control you and torment you and rule your life, then that's something you need to get out of your heart. I believe that fear is gift-wrapped in wrong expectations. 
if I'm expecting something bad to happen then I'm going to be afraid it will and that's exactly what I'm going to get fear is much worse than the things that really happen because the things that happen happen and we get on beyond them and they get an answer and we move on but that fear is tormenting and it just never goes away you can have evil forebodings and you can always be afraid something bad's going to happen you can refuse to trust people because you've been hurt a few times and just live in isolation and agony or you can get up every day and say I believe something good is going to happen to me today I am expecting something good to happen to me today perfect heart is humble probably one of the hardest things to come by is humility God respects the lowly and he brings them into fellowship with him but the proud and the haughty he resists a humble person a person with a perfect heart is going to have an attitude that says God I depend on you for everything I know I'm nothing without you I lean on you I rely on you a person with a perfect heart is going to acknowledge God in all their ways they're just not going to make all their own plans and expect God to bless them how often do you give your opinion when nobody's asked for it I'm serious if you're the kind of person that's always got to give your opinion it's a heart problem you think more highly of yourself than you ought to and so do I I heard myself twice this week say well I know it's none of my business but I'm gonna tell you what I think anyway <laughs> well so I'm still growing it doesn't bother me to tell you that stuff at least I'm facing it I'm not hiding from it and I'm letting God deal with it in my life you don't have to try to pretend to be something that you're not it doesn't bother me to tell you that I still but I'll tell you one thing I'm not where I need to be but thank God I'm not where I used to be I'm telling you what I am growing Well, I think we all need...